Now when we're talking about pressure, we need to discuss atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure. Very important subject which is sometimes hard to grasp. What you have to realise is that air possesses mass. People think to think that air does not possess mass. It does. Air weighs something. If I got all the air from one square kilometre, put it in here now, brought it in here and put it in my bag, how much would it weigh? People say nothing. No, it weighs weigh 10 million tonnes. Air possesses mass. Generally air, one metre cubed of air, one metre cubed of air has a density of 1.2 kilograms per metre cubed. That's general at naught degree. It's roughly 1.2 kilograms per metre cubed. It weighs the same as half a bag of sugar. You've got to remember that air does possess mass. It has got density. The density of air is 1.2 kilograms per metre cubed and it's about a thousand times lighter than water. So although it's, very, it's got density, it's a thousand times less than water. Now as you can see here, if you consider the height of a column of air to the upper atmosphere, it's many kilometres isn't it? On our planet we've got this air, but the, the column of air is kilometres high. That kilometres high. So that air on your head pushing down, all this hair, all this air above our head, kilometres and kilometres of it, is pushing down. Although it's quite light, 1.2 kilometres a metre cubed, that's pushing down on our head. Well, if you think about it, how does an aircraft take off? It uses the air to lift it up, doesn't it? Does it take off into the wind or with the wind behind it, an aircraft? It takes off into the wind. Why? What does it use to lift it up? It puts its flaps, it lifts them up, and it uses the air. When it gets to a certain speed, it uses the air to lift it up. So air is keeping it up. Well, if air didn't weigh anything, what's lifting the aircraft up? Air does possess mass. Now, here, as you can see here, if you had a tube sealed at one end and filled it with water and then turned it upside down, would it run out? Would it run out? No. Why? Why won't it run out? If you had that and you turned it upside down, why would that not run out? It's because it'd be kept there by this pressure from the air here. So these two bits at the side of there would be keeping that water in there. Because there's pressure of the air on the top of that liquid, it would keep the water inside the tube. It wouldn't pour out because there's air pushing down pressure. It's because the column of water is suspended by the atmospheric pressure on the liquid of the surface. Don't forget we said air possesses mass. However, with any given liquid there's a limit to how high the column can be. Well, what's the height? Well, for water it'd be approximately 11 metres high. In other words, a column of air to the upper atmosphere is, is about the same pressure as 11 metres of water. So what's the highest, com if I had that sealed tube again, what is the highest column that I can have inside a tube? Well it's 11 metres, because if that was 30 metres, a 30 metre tube, and I turned it upside down, a 30 metres tube, that water would have more pressure on the bottom of it than the air, and it would force it out. Do you see what I mean? So the highest that column of water can be is 11 metres, because that's the atmospheric pressure forcing down on it. That's the principle, that's the principle. Now in this picture here, as you can see, in this tube here, as you can see, there's that, that area there is considered to be a vacuum. Now actually, it's not a vacuum, it will have some water vapour. Because the liquid will have a vapour pressure and it will let some water molecules will be coming off, condensing and going back again. But that's not really a vacuum, there's not, there's not nothing in there. There will be some water vapour in there. So it's not actually a vacuum, it's got water vapour. Now, for mercury, this is virtually non-existent. At atmospheric, normal atmospheric temperatures, it's virtually non-existent. The vapour pressure is so low that not the mercury will actually be vaporising. Now, if this inverted tube here were filled with mercury, like I said before, if there's a gap at the top, you wouldn't have had any vapour coming off because mercury's got a very low vapour pressure. There's not very much molecules of it. So it literally would be nearly a vacuum in the top of there. However, if you put mercury in this inverted tube, what you've actually got is the principle of a mercury barometer, as you can see here. So how does the barometer, how does the barometer have to be? How high? Well, atmospheric pressure at sea level is approximately 101,300 pascals. That is atmospheric pressure at sea level, 101,300 pa pascals. Well, the formula to determine the pressure on a column of mercury, we've probably said before, this is a very important formula. Pressure equals 9.81 rho h. Let's have a look. Therefore, 101,300 equals 9.81 times rho h. Well, which means 101,300 equals 13,354 
times 9.81 times the height, because that's the density of mercury, 13,354 kilograms per metre cubed. You put that in, by transposition you'd get that, and that multiplies out, it comes out at 0.76 metres. So a column of mercury, 0.76 metres high, based on that formula, will have the same pressure as atmospheric or the air. So a column of mercury, 0.76 metres, is the same as a column of air to the upper atmosphere, and it's the same as a column of water, 11 metres. Do you understand? It's based on its density. And that's where you get 760 millimetres of mercury being quoted as atmospheric pressure, because that's it's the same as atmospheric pressure. Now, if the pressure dropped outside, then the level in the mercury barometer would also drop. Do you see what I mean? It'd be held in there by atmospheric pressure, but if the pressure outside dropped, the mercury would drop. The level of mercury would drop. Do you see how a mercury barometer works? The pressure drops outside, what happens is, the pressure becomes reduced there, the mercury drops. That's how you use a mercury barometer. Now, how high would the column of water have to be if, it was a, if we had a water barometer? Because we could have a water barometer. We could have an inverted tube with water in there, couldn't we? How high would it have to be? Well, if you put it in that formula, it works out at, if you put it in that formula there, pressure equals, atmospheric pressure is 101,300, the density of water is 1,000, so 101,300 equals 1,000 times 9.81 times the height, transpose the formula, it comes out actually at 10.3 metres. That would be one atmosphere. One atmosphere is 10.3 metres. Now that's not practical to carry around, is it? A 10.3 metre water barometer. Well actually, even a 0.7, even a 0.76 metre barometer is not really a good idea, a mercury barometer, so they don't normally transport them. They don't, what they normally use is one of these, an aneroid barometer. This would not be practical to carry around, neither are mercury, so that's why they use these. These were developed, and these work on the principle that changes in pressure cause small movements in a partially evacuated metal box. So the pressure makes it move very slowly. And all it does, the aneroid barometer will amplify the movement by a system of levers in there, which makes the point and move around the scale, as shown on there. So when the pressure drops, as you can see, the pressure drops, all that will happen is, the pressure drops, the levers move, and the, the barometer will tell you what the pressure is. That's how these pressures work. Now these barometers can actually be used as an altimeter as well. It can actually tell what altitude they're at. Because it can use, all they do is they take it higher up, and as it higher up, they know that the pressure's going to be lower up there. The pressure's lower on Mount Everest than it is down here, because there's less air, you're going higher up, the column of air is less, so the pressure's less. So you could actually turn it into an altonometer, and it'll actually tell you the, the height, because you can equate it to the pressure.